This is a line follower robot. And this is also a line follower robot, except it runs the PID algorithm, which hopefully should be able to go through the super complex track that I built all around my living room. But why am I building a line follower all of a sudden? It's a pretty simple project, right? Well, it all started when a friend of mine challenged me to a line follower competition. And because a line follower is a pretty basic project, come on, every robotics enthusiast starts from there. And I'd already built many complex projects with microcontrollers and sensors. I said, So on that day, my line follower simply refused to follow any line. In fact, it was actively avoiding the line. My friend won that challenge with his bot hitting an average speed of 0.7 meters per second. So, and that's when I decided to eat a bag of chips and cry about it. I mean, I mean, after that, I wanted to build a line follower that is at least twice as fast as his bot and is capable of going through a super complex track. I started with a basic prototype. I bought the cheapest chassis from Amazon, mounted two standard DC motors and attached the wheels. I used an Arduino Uno and a basic motor driver and a AA battery pack. I made all the connections and uploaded the code. And if everything went well, it should work. But nothing. The basic prototype wasn't working. See, at this point, you could either get super frustrated and give up or you could do some push-ups and get back to troubleshooting. The Arduino was working for sure. Left motor works. Right motor also works. How about the motor driver? It was also working. So that leaves us with the battery pack. I replaced it with a 12 volt LiPo battery and tested it out. Voila, it works. Well, almost. The line follower has two IR sensors, which detect the black line. The bot only has three modes. Both the sensors on white go straight, left sensor on black, turn right, right sensor on black, turn left. And in this sharp turn, both were in the black, so it stops. Now, this is what we call as a bang bang controller. Oh, don't ask me why it's called that. Well, the best explanation is it goes to the right, bang, turns left. Too much to the left, bang, turns right. But this type of controller isn't very fast. And there's no way I could hit the target of two times the speed of his bot with this. So I sat down to design a new chassis. So I drew the most natural shape that came into my mind. But I didn't know how long to make it. Too short and it wasn't responsive. And too long and it's unstable. So I settled somewhere in between. Then I designed it on Fusion 360 and got it 3D printed. Now the motors we used weren't particularly fast and the wheels didn't have any traction. I replaced them with these N20 motors and rubber wheels which were sent to me by DF Robot. I replaced the IR sensors with this cool array of five IR sensors. Now this might be offensive to the jumper wires, but they are ugly. So I hopped down to my PCB design software and designed a simple board to put all the electronics together and I use JLC PCB to get them manufactured. Just upload your Gerber file, select your preferences, and place your order. And done. Uh, no, I totally did not ask my brother to ring the bell. I realized I forgot to make a screw hole to mount the PCB. Hot glue. Well, at this point, I've gotten used to the fact that it never works on your first try. If you've noticed something, I left out the motor drivers. That's because they waste too much power as heat. So I replaced them with a much more efficient chip. And the best part is, it came pre-soldered onto the board, thanks to PCB assembly services from JLC PCB. So basically, the chip was an active high chip, which means I should have soldered these two pins together. And now the motors work. Also, I replaced the Arduino with an ESP32 because it has Bluetooth, which was very helpful in the end. So now the car has got all the hardware upgrades, but it's not yet ready for the tracks. You see, this new IR sensor array gives a value of how far the bot is from the line. 
This is called the error or E. Then you feed that back in a closed loop PID feedback controller. Uh, just kidding, let me explain. So we multiply this error with a constant KP to find a steering value. Now this steering value is directly proportional to the error. The greater the error is, the faster it turns. The steering value also depends on the constant KP. A smaller KP value will not be able to turn fast enough and the turns will be lagging. Whereas a larger KP value will overcompensate for the error and oscillate. So here's where I use Bluetooth to try out different KP values and find the one that gave the best results. Now the way this car steers is actually quite interesting. It has two wheels, both traveling at a base speed. The steering value is subtracted from one side and added to the other side. So this creates an overall turning effect of the car. After spending hours, I found a good KP value, but there's still some oscillations left. Now we could find out how fast the error is changing or the derivative of the error and multiply a constant KB and add this to the steering value. So if the error is decreasing too fast, then the steering is slowed down so that it doesn't overshoot. If I use a higher KD value, that'll make the turns very smooth and slow, whereas a lower KD value will make it jerky. Here's what a good KD value looks like. Now we could be done here, but there still remains a small error which is too small for the proportional and the derivative to deal with. But if we add the small errors, over time it becomes significant. So we integrate this error with respect to time and multiply it by another constant Ki and add this to the steering value. After some tuning, we have the perfect result. Now, these three values, the proportional, integral, and the derivative, are together what we call as the PID controller. We're almost done, but there's still one thing left to do. Make it look cool. So I sat down to design the coolest looking car and came up with this. Though I did forget to mention the color while placing the order, but of all the colors he could have chosen, he chose gray. No. So now it's time to lay down the tracks. So what I'm going to do is I have this packet of electrical tape which I'm going to stick all over my living room floor. So I'm just going to make random designs. I don't have any particular design in mind. However, there are three important parts that really test the ability of the line follower. Number one is the 90 degree turns and number two is the meanders. And the hardest part is the intersections. Alright, so I've laid down the tracks and now it's time for the final showdown. But how fast did it really go? Well, to measure the speed, I marked down two points which are one meter apart and ran the stopwatch. It had a top speed of one meter per second. In fact, it was faster without the plastic cover. As the old saying goes, all that glitters is not super fast. Either way, it was fast enough to get back at my friend.